Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So uh, we're, we're back with our power supply project here. I'm not going to let this thing defeat me. I'm going to figure out how myself and anybody else who's watching this series can actually use this in a reasonable way and get some good use out of it. I, I, you know, as I said before, I, I didn't see anything wrong with the circuit, but I've been going through some of the values and doing some calculations and there are a number of little items that uh, need to be addressed, but it can be made to work properly. And I'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, this is the original Transformers, the uh, toroidal one, and uh, you know the the uh, primary was open circuit on it. So I decided I would take the secondary off and maybe you know find it. I thought it might have been you know connections to the actual winding that was the fault, but it it turned out uh, it's not. So what it looks like happened is that they they wound on the primary and then they dropped it and it hit something hard right there, and it's bitten through. Basically, what I have is a a large ferrite core. Anyway, I did get my money back on it, so that's okay. Dealing with AliExpress is not too bad. I mean, some, it took a couple of days to get my money back, but I got it back. Anyway, in the meantime, uh, we got a parcel in from DigiKey. DigiKey. And in here should be our new transformer to replace this one. And uh, the toroid. It's not gonna be the final transformer. I'll get into that in a minute. And in here should also be a transformer for another project, which I'll, when I get around to it, I'll introduce you guys to. It's actually an old project that's been underway for ages. All right, I always like their packing material. I mean, this is something I can use as fire starters and stuff like that. And it's, uh, yeah. I don't like bubble wrap, I don't like foam. This stuff's fine. Okay. So these would be the ICs. So these are my TL081. And here are a couple of big triad transformers. There's this one here. I don't know if this is the one for this project or not. Nope, 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 nope. This one's for the other project. So this is a this is a great big uh, 24 volt, six amp transformer so that's going to be for that audio amplifier project that has been undergoing for a long time put that aside for now so this here oh yeah this is a much later transformer so it's the one for this that i got for this project that i won't be using i'll use it temporarily for a minute or two to show you some some of my concerns and discuss what i'm going to do and I may do, I may use it in the future for a power supply, which I designed myself that'll actually work. But uh, we'll cross that road when we come to it. So there's that transformer. So let me, let me hook that up to here. One thing I want to show you is a little hack that maybe a lot of people don't know. Like if, if you're going to put stranded wire into, you know, these little uh, terminals here, even into these sort of terminal blocks here, a really handy way to do it is to you just take a um, take a soldering iron and tin the tip of it. So I strip it off to the length that you want, and then just tin the tip. So I get a little bit of solder into the first uh, millimeter or so of it, and that stops the, the the strands from coming apart. So let me talk about a, a, a few of the things that I did between the last video and now. So I put in uh, I put in polarized connectors for the the LED for the overcurrent protection, and I put in one for the fan as well. I also changed this um, voltage regulator here to 24 volt, put a little heat sink on it. And uh, so that's, that's just the power supply for the fan and for the, the meter here. I also put in a terminal block here to connect the main pass transistor and I've mounted that on some wires and I have a clamp to this big heat sink here. Now this, this heat sink here is roughly the size of the one I have coming for the power supply. Uh, the one I have coming is just slightly a bit bigger but uh, this will give me a good indication of how well that'll work. And I've got the fan kind of slopped on there too. And uh, so what else I did? Oh yeah, this resistor over here, I think it's R2. I put in a, a pair of two 180 ohm resistors, so it comes up to 90 ohms. Resistance here is not, it's not critical. Uh, I also have coming for me actually an, an 82 ohm resistor in a half watt package. I've also got another resistor coming to and we'll discuss that in a minute. And I think that's it so far. Oh yeah, another thing I did is I put in 741s in here because I just wanted to try it out with a, with a known good amplifier. So I took out the, these these uh, 
God knows what they are, these op amps. And you saw the behavior in the last video. If you hadn't, go back and watch that video. Um, this, this thing was, wasn't going to work properly at all with these op amps in it. They're, I don't know what they are. They're not TL-08ones. So we're going to carry forward from this point here. And I want to show you how it works with these 741s, but I'm going to show you some of the other things I discovered and uh, go through some of my reasoning as to where we're going to go with this. So let me let me turn on the power here. Now I've got this coming through. You can't see it's off screen. I've got this coming through a variac over here. And uh, that way I can adjust the voltage. And it's, it, right now it's adjusted to exactly what's coming out of the mains, which is about 120.5 volts today for some strange reason. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so we've got current limiters on. Oh, and I have, a, I have a DC load set up to it here because today we're going to go well beyond the ability of that little load that I had before. So say so now here with these 741s in there, we can get 31 volts out of it instead of the 20 something that we got before. And it, it adjusts right from the top. So everything now is, is working as it should in that respect. And uh, the current limiting is working better too comes on roughly where it should and it doesn't it doesn't come on like before when we turn this down all the way the current would, for some strange reason would come on but now it it doesn't so now we've got it kind of working the way the specifications say i haven't tested the current yet but we'll do that in a minute but i want to show you something let me see if i can get a meter into the picture here can you see that yes you can okay and now let me show you the voltage across these uh operational amplifiers here. It's a, so here we are, this one here, we got 39.8 volts. This is this here is a 36 volt device. And we have, with a small load on the thing, we've got 39.9 volts, or basically 40 volts. See, it goes up to 41 volts. And that's the same over here with the voltage amplifier. Now here, this is the reference amplifier here. It's this one here, it's borderline. I mean, even this one here, which doesn't have the negative supply on it, it just goes down to the zero rail. It's uh, right at its limit. So th the way this is set up right now, it's not gonna last long. These, these are just regular 741s. And even if I had TL081s in there, they're the same, they're a 36 volt op amp. Uh, they're under extreme stress right now. So that's why I'm not going to use this transformer. I'm going to use a 20 volt transformer and I'm going to make this power supply into a zero to 25 volt power supply. That way the components can live happily. And now there's another reason for it. Not only for these, like I could replace these with more modern uh, op amps. Like you just use a little, a little uh, breakout board or chip carrier, whatever you want to call it, and put a, a little surface mount one. You can get them 40 volts, 44 volts and stuff like that. They're a bit more expensive than, you know, your run-of-the-mill 741 or TL081. Or I could put in a 741J, which is a 44-volt mil-spec device. However, those 741Js, they're like $30 Canadian each. So that you'd be, be looking at $90 for this. And that's just, it, that just seems a ridiculous way to solve this problem. A much better way to solve the problem is to, is to get the 4-amp 20-volt transformer and reduce the expectations on the, the voltage outs. That's the direction I'm taking. And like I said, there's another reason for it. So this transistor here, this has got an absolute maximum of 100 watts. So if you've got, if you've got 40 volts on your rails here, or actually on, on the uh, going into the supply, the high current supply, we've got, uh, we can just measure it here. So we've got 35.8, let's call it 36 volts. And let's say you had a circuit where you're, you wanted three volts at three amps, you're gonna be at 100 watts of dissipation here. And so this is living on the edge. And I wanna kind of alleviate that too. So if we drop this down to 25 volts at three amps, then we're gonna have a much lower voltage here. And this thing is going to be running in the 75 watt range, which is far more comfortable. So basically making that change, and uh, I will have to change one of the resistors on here in order to get the uh, full range of the voltage control. But making that change will make this power supply a nice stable power supply that's able to live happily over its entire operating envelope without being on the edge of blowing itself up. To that end, um, let me bring down the voltage on this transformer so that we'll get out approximately what we would get out of a 20 volt transformer. Right now we're getting 28. 
So let's bring that down to 23 volts. That's basically you know what you'd get on a 20 volt transformer with no load on it. Of course, we'll verify all that when I get that transformer in. However, unfortunately, DigiKey have told me it won't be until October sometime because they don't have it in stock now. And I guess the manufacturing plant has to kind of gear up. So we'll see. Usually they ship along before what they say when they say you got a back order there, but we'll see how it goes. Now let's see what we have here. Uh, we have on the power side 29 volts, which is just fine. And across the operation amplifiers, we have 34.5 volts. So now these are in their happy zone. So let's see what our, our maximum voltage now as we let's turn off the current limit and we'll turn up the voltage here to maximum. So we're getting 26.1 out of it. And of course we can we can bring that down to zero and all the way up. Okay, let me get the current on this up to three amps. So I'm just gonna go over to the load and do that now. Okay, so what's happened here? Let's see what it's reading now. With a big load on it. Oh, it's 20.8. So uh, yeah, I do realize that I'm going to have to change gain on this voltage amplifier here. So that'll have to be changed to get this to work properly. But we'll worry about that in the next video. Right now, I just want to see how things are going with respect to, oh yeah, yeah, don't believe this. See that says, says 4.32 amps. Uh, we're not taking 4.32 amps through this thing. It were, it, DC load is telling me we're at 2.99 amps. Okay, so everything's much happier now. We got we got happy transistor, we got happy op amps. I'm gonna to have to adjust this biasing on this amplifier as well, because it doesn't give me much control whatsoever. So we'll have to investigate that as well. I'll leave that for the next video though. I've also decided that I'm going to up the size of the case. I'm going to use a case of this size because this transformer will no longer fit comfortably in the other case and neither will the, the heat sink that I'm getting. But they will fit into a case this size. So I've got one of those coming as well. And I'm going to, um, I was going to get some 10 turn pots, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do, let me, let me use my, my little horrible whiteboard here. What I'm going to do for the, the fine adjustment on it. So we're going to have a coarse and fine in both the current and the voltage. And the way we're going to do that, like I've seen a lot of people do it, you know, where they, they have a potentiometer here. And then they put in another potentiometer up here. And kind of connect it up like this. So where, you know, this might be 10K, this would be 1K. When this is down at zero, you don't have any control over the fine. I'm going to get some, turn that off, this is noise bothering me. I'm going to get a couple of uh, dual gang pots, basically like this, except for you have on the other side as well, one that's hooked up like this. So you, you have like a 1K here, 10K here, and a 1K here. And these are connected together along the same shaft. So what happens here is, is the, the whole res the resistance of the whole thing down from, from up here straight through to down here never changes. So as, as this one goes up, this one comes down. But what it does is it moves the adjustment point up and down uh, between the top and the bottom. So this way you'll always get, so if we have 1K and 10K, you'll, you should have get a 10% variability and it should remain 10% right down at the bottom, right up at the top. So yeah, I, and I've used this many, many times in the past when I've had to do things like that. So there's a drawback to it. Instead of having a single pot, like a 10 turn pot, you have to have two pots now and you have to be able to source a dual gang pot. So this is where I went through my thinking. Like I showed you everything, like the over voltage on the op amps. I explained to you the over current on the, on the or the over dissipation on the transistor. So these are, were kind of the, um, the options I went through here. So if I, change the up ramps for the amps and volts i could change them to lm741s the other one here the, the the voltage reference one is fine but these are these are about 30 bucks a piece so you know adding an additional 60 dollars to the project that way 
I think it's, it's just too much money to spend on something like this because we're trying to build an inexpensive power supply that we can use on the bench. And it still doesn't solve the, the fact that your pass transistor is trying to pass 95 watts, which for on a continuous basis is way too much for this transistor. The next one was to um, change, change the supply on this one here. So if I was to, if I was to take uh, pin seven here on it and cut that trace and then bring it up to the output of the regulator here to put 24 volts on it, then this one would be happy, this one would be happy, and then I could replace this one with an LM741J. And that would bring the price from, well, this would be $60. That'll bring the price down to $30. But I've still got the problem here. I've still got this problem with the pass transistor trying to pass too much. Third option was uh, use a 20 volt transformer and adjust the gain on the voltage error amplifier here. So that's that's the, the route we are going to take. That solves this problem and it solves the over voltage on the off amp. So both problems are solved right away. You know, another suggestion came to me. I didn't think of it myself, but uh, I think it might have been left in the discussion section of the last video, but somebody said uh, reduce the voltage on the negative rail. And I, I guess I could do that. I could take out that 5.1 volt zener here and put in a, a 2.7 or something like that. That might still provide enough negative voltage for everything to work properly. But I'm, I might have to also then, I, uh, well, I would, I would have to change some of the gain on both the current amplifier and, and the voltage amplifier. So I'd have to change their uh, resistors on those. And these things would then be running right at their limit. So it, it's not going to really solve the problem. We're not bringing the voltage down sufficiently that there's some headroom there, especially with a low load on the system. They'll be working right at 36 or a little bit over 36 volts. Now, while they'll last a heck of a lot longer, it's still stressing them out and they're not going to last forever. And it still doesn't solve the problem with this pass transistor here. I guess we could replace that transistor with a more powerful one. Something like 2N3055 would probably work there. 2N3055 doesn't have as much gain as this. It's a little bit less, so it might put a little bit more strain on this transistor, but this, this one doesn't seem to, to have any problems at all. Like it doesn't even get remotely warm. So that's it, folks. That's where we are with it. So I've got stuff to come in. And we won't come back to this until I get all that stuff in. So I'm going to have that 20 volt transformer. I'm going to I'm get, got some more of these meters coming in. It doesn't have an adjustment for the current and it's, it's wrong on the currents. I have some more coming in and hopefully one of those will be a little bit more accurate. Yeah, like I said, I have a resistor coming for here. I have a resistor coming for the, the gain here. So one of the changes have to be made is uh, this resistor here. R12 has to be changed from, I think it's a 56K down to a 40K for this to work properly as a 25 volt power supply. That's where we are with it, folks. Thanks a lot for coming out today and uh, we'll see you in the next video, which should be roughly on Wednesday or something. It's going to be a, a, a mailbag video because I've got mail is, is uh, piling up again. So we'll see you in that one. And yes, it's all from AliExpress.